guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be talking about a very important subject when it comes to keeping crested geckos, and that would be their diet. So first of all, this is Piper, she's my tiger pinstripe crested gecko, and she's just going to chill with us today and help out. So the first part of their diet that I wanted to talk about would be the powdered meal replacements you often see for crested geckos. And the reason I wanted to talk about these is because this is what should be the bulk of your diet. These have all the nutrients that they need and you're going to be feeding that more than anything else. For an adult, you want to feed about three times a week. For a juvenile, more like every other day. Each gecko is a little different and is going to have their own schedule, but that's a general guideline. So just to give you an idea of what those are going to look like, I'm going to show you the two brands that I tend to use. So the first one that I use would be Rapashi. This is the banana cream pie flavor. They've got several others. They have a mulberry one. They have a... Actually, you know what? The mulberry one, I believe, might have been limited edition, so I'm not sure if you can still get that, but you can check. They have a fig one. They have a grubs and fruit. Uh, it, it has insects in it, which is really good for them. I don't think it sounds appetizing, but she likes it, so I don't care. If she'll eat, I'm good. And then I also use the Zoomed. This is the tropical fruit flavor with probiotics. So it's got like extra nutrients that a lot of the other ones don't have. Zoomed also makes other flavors. They've got an apricot one, a watermelon, um, a papaya, I think, and then a fig one. There's a bunch of them. I can't keep track of them all, but there's plenty of options for you to choose from. If you seem to have a picky gecko, you should be able to find something that they like. The next part of their diet would be insects, and this is very important. You don't ever want to skip those. You should be feeding them about once a week. The main things that you're going to feed would be crickets and dubia roaches. You can also give them things like waxworms and butterworms on occasion, but the bulk of them should be dubias and crickets. Now this next part, it may sound a little weird, but I actually recommend feeding your crickets before you feed them to your gecko. And the reason for this is because typically in the bins that crickets are kept in, in like reptile stores and whatnot that you buy them from, there's typically other dead crickets in there. And as crickets die, they like, they eat each other and ammonia and bacteria and just other gross stuff tends to build up and when the living crickets ingest that and then you feed that to your gecko it can actually cause other health issues and make your gecko sick so what i recommend doing would just be putting in like a piece of apple or carrot whatever kind of fruit or veggie you have on hand and want to give them like seriously just like a little piece like the size of your fingernail that's all they need and just give them overnight to eat that and pass everything through their system, and then you should be good to feed them to your gecko. The next part of your crested gecko's diet is going to be supplementation such as calcium powder and multivitamin. And this goes hand in hand with feeding insects because the insects are gonna be what you use to get the multivitamin or calcium powder into your crested gecko. And you do this by dusting the insects in the multivitamin or calcium powder. Usually I just put them in the cricket bag, dump some of the powder in, shake it up a little bit, and then put them in the enclosure. If your crested gecko does not have a UVB light, you want to give them a multivitamin with D3. If they do have a UVB light, you want to give them a multivitamin without D3. Now, as I mentioned previously, you're going to be feeding insects once a week, and that's how you're going to get the multivitamin and calcium powder into your crested gecko. The calcium powder you want to feed once a week, whereas the multivitamin you only want to feed about once a month. Now calcium is extra important for females, especially if they're adults, because once they reach 18 to 24 months, they start laying eggs regardless of whether they're with a male or not. Clearly, if they're not with a male, these eggs will be infertile, but the females still need extra calcium powder to form these eggs. And if adequate calcium powder is not provided, the females will begin to take calcium from their bones to form the eggs, and that's obviously not good, and they can develop issues such as metabolic bone disease, which is going to require a vet, and in some cases it can be fatal. Now the chance of your gecko getting MBD is pretty unlikely as long as they're getting adequate calcium, but it's just something to be aware of so you're making sure you never skip those calcium dustings. Now the next part of their diet would be fresh fruit, and this is something I definitely recommend adding in once in a while. You don't wanna do it too much, but a few times a month should be good. And you can give them things like blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, peaches, bananas, plums. There's a whole list, I'll put it up on screen. So if you want to screenshot it, you can, or copy it, feel free to. 
and that's just, first just a good idea to add. It's something that they would naturally consume in the wild and has extra nutrients in it. Be careful, you don't wanna feed it too much, but it's definitely a good idea to add it as an occasional treat. And that being said, that wraps up today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, like, share, subscribe, hop on over to Reptile Rave on Instagram and give it a follow there. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned something new from this video and that it helped you out. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time.